How big is cryptocurrency? The biggest players right now uh, within the landscape, uh, within when you look at, let's say, the last uh, nine years, uh, last eight, nine years that have been uh, really prominent in the space have been the exchanges, you know, where you, know, you get the basic uh, onboarding of being able to access uh, digital uh, cryptocurrencies. So they're, they're the likes of Luno, uh, Valar, Ovix, um, Altcoin Trader, and Rivix. Those are South African exchanges. And you know, they've been participating in the space. We're also a, a small exchange um, that has also been participating in the last five years uh, here as well. And we've just been providing the digital asset itself, uh, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, various other cryptocurrencies. And it's still in adoption phase. Um, you, you know, this, when you look at the African landscape, is that people are still adopting. They're still, you know, buying their first coin, getting into the coin. A lot of people don't even know about it. So it's still early ages. Easy money. What is the success rate of cryptocurrency in Africa? When you look at, let's say, um, uh, what this, uh, the, the, the large success aspect of why um, you know, things like Compesa have you know, flourished is largely due to you know, um, you know, uh, kind of celebrating the whole idea of adoption uh, in many ways. And you know, from smartphone penetration, I mean, you look at Africa, it's the highest smartphone penetration in the world. Um, so already having these users, I mean, it would be almost like a bank, you know, let's say a bank has already current users and then now a bank issuing, uh, you know, cryptocurrency. So like, let's say the same way M-Pesa has mobile subscribers and now they're issuing uh, mobile digital money. But uh, this money is, is, you know, it's, it's nothing, not to say it's nothing new, but I mean, they've been the ones who've really done uh, the best and really kind of pioneered in the space. But there are, also, there are also a lot of other exper uh, examples of mobile money. Um, although when you compare it to blockchain, uh, mobile money is immutable. You know, um, uh, it's centrally controlled, it's not decentralized, and it empowers uh, Western, you know, Western back countries. So when we look at, let's say, the local mobile money and, and you know, digital cryptocurrencies, uh, the ones that have been created, when you look at, let's say, even Luna and Valar and, you know, the exchanges locally, those are local South Africans who are benefiting and who are running and um, you're running those exchanges, opposed to, let's say, uh, you're going to look at what M-Pesa is doing. Um, and then come back to uh, technology, not the same technology. I mean, um, you know, we're looking at something that's uh, digitally um, app-based from mobile money, which uh, versus something at uh, all well, from telecommunication space then versus something that's uh, on the cryptographic uh, blockchain which is different in terms of this architecture as well so i would still say that um, the cryptographic blockchain solution is safer it's more transparent Easy money. Easy money. Easy money, does cryptocurrency help the global move away from the u.s dollar i think it's a great idea to to kind of decouple, um, to break down the, uh, the monopoly, the swift monopoly that the United States has and Western countries have. And, and actually, you know, when you look at, let's say, what the dollar is, I mean, the dollar is an international standard, the international currency of the world. And, you know, it's, it's a common denominating aspect for value uh, across, all, uh, across all paradigms. Um, you know, it is the international standard that we all look at as a, as a metric to trade, to do things. To exchange um, although at the same time with that being said all this does is that it actually empowers the greenback and because there's more circular flow because there's more transactions there's more fung uh, fungibility there's more liquidity so as more people use it um, then it grows in value and that's why its currency is so strong around the world because so many people use it and when you look at that all centrally being controlled by a country um, and then you go and look at, let's say, what's happening with crypto, with Bitcoin, and how Bitcoin has kind of, um, you know, decoupled and kind of separated what, um, you know, what, what uh, value means, what in terms of um, exchange as well. Because now a lot of uh, payments, a lot of settlements are being done in crypto. So that, with that, what that does is that now also has brought more value within um, within the cryptographic space, within the blockchain space. And I believe that now if a currency can do that, 
um, let's say that it's now backed by countries and let's say it's within locked within BRICS and then it will benefit us, you know, the five countries and now we've also got, you know, um, UAE and Saudi joining uh, BRICS as well. And I mean, you look at what Saudi did with uh, Russia, where they actually did their, uh, uh, an oil transaction in Durham's, in, 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 in UAE Durham's. And that also was a big, uh, a big move um, to move away from what, uh, when you look at, let's say, the agreements that OPEC and the, and the oil companies um, have made, and you know, the American government have made in the 60s with even the Saudi royal family, uh, where they actually agreed for oil to be traded globally and then also for oil to be traded in US dollars, you know, and that has fundamentally benefited the United States, um, you know, Federal Reserve more than any other country in the world in terms of circular flow, in terms of currency strength. And, you know, when now we stop using dollars and we start using other currencies and now use, let's say, BRICS backed currency, that will bring more value, circular flow and trade. Easy money. Are there plans to regulate the cryptocurrency blockchain space in Africa? There are a few pro proof of concepts. There are, you know, a few countries, let's say like Nigeria, that has uh, legislated crypto. And when you look at, you know, two interesting cases, I always look at, you know, I always compare Nigeria and America, and you know, you look at the money situation. And I always say, look, America and Nigeria had to, you know, move towards uh, regulation because there's just simply too much money and there's just simply too much trade going on in both countries and also between each other, you know. So, you know, the best thing for them was to, to move towards regulation, to w move towards, um, you know, a, a digital backed currency and, and also legislating different uh, cryptocurrencies to, uh, to be allowed to be traded. And you look at Japan, Japan has had, uh, you know, Bitcoin as a legal tender, actually paying salaries, government allowing companies to pay salaries and people are uh, being able to earn in Bitcoin and being able to be paid in Bitcoin uh, as a national uh, legal tender. What was the Unlocking Blockchain Africa conference about and how can Africa take advantage of it? And essentially that was to, to bring together the world um, for Africa and, you know, in terms of, and to, for us to learn, to exchange uh, value, um, skills, um, in, and demystifying, you know, this whole, um, this whole new world, this whole new industry of blockchain cryptocurrencies, where we invited uh, various sponsors, various spe uh, speakers and companies, and for, for them to be able to teach us uh, what is crypto, what is blockchain, what is Bitcoin. When you look at this industry, it's still a very new industry, you know, you look at how minerals are being extracted from Africa and we're not getting the right, the, the value for them and you know from all the shelf enterprising and you know i believe that crypto uh, blockchain and even founders in africa uh, you know who are all busy with different use cases and different hypotheses um, this is the technology that is going to liberate us Easy money. how is the united arab emirates dominating the cryptocurrency blockchain space Dubai right now, the UAE, um, is the place um, uh, for, for cryptocurrency because even in 2018, what they started with uh, the legislation that they did, uh, Dr. Marwan, who's also very pivotal at uh, World Economic Forum, um, you know, when they started their legislation of uh, digital assets and crypto assets and recognizing uh, crypto assets as commodities, that really was a game changer. And, you know, then later economic free zones allow companies and foreigners to incorporate. But you go to Dubai, this is now the international trade port, uh, trade, you know, platform of the world. You know, you go and look at what's happening in Dubai, uh, Dubai um, multi-commodity center, uh, where cryptocurrencies are recognized as a digital asset. Um, you know, and you know, that by itself, with all the other, you know, at the DMCC, um, you could, there's a coffee exchange, there's a, there's a diamond exchange, there's a gold exchange. And what that's done now is that it's created a trading platform for African countries. It right now has become and what New York was 200 years ago, but right now it's open, right? It's open for the, the, the first move advantage. Right now it's open for the entrepreneur. So 
when you look at, let's say, also geographic positioning as well, I mean, Dubai is in the center geographically of the world. And also for us in Africa, I mean, it's, it's four to six hours away flight instead of 16 hours flight to New York. Um, so the geographic positioning as well also plays um, a great benefit. And it's now breaking what London used to be, what Wall Street used to be, what Singapore used to be. And, and now it's, it's, it's the new trade international hub of the world. Easy money. Where does Africa currently stand vis-a-vis -vis cryptocurrency? We're still at a teaching and learning and growing phase in Africa, so we still want to learn, uh, build and you know, teach and grow people uh, with people here in, in the space and also growing our business. Um, and you know, as well as you know, we, we operate here in, in South Africa, but also in the UAE, and the reason being is that we look at that as a trade path, you know, a trade path into the international world but also still being based here and still operating here and still taking advantage of the fact that we are in a developing market, uh, we are in a developing uh, crypto ecosystem, um, but also we're in a developed, you know, you know developing, um, you know, let's say, you know, financial uh, fintech ecosystem, but we go look at, let's say, other areas where you've really thrived, um, you know, from mining resources um, over the years, to be to be where we are right now now today you know at a time you know number one gold producer number one uh, com, um, coal producer in the world so you know right now I believe that you know things like um, what we're trying to do with our conference and and also different forums and different platforms that we're trying to do um, we're trying to make uh, trade more relevant in Africa trade with the UAE trade with the Middle East. Um, you know, um, a bigger thing because the the, the opportunities are there, right? Um, they 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 are opening up more opportunities for Africans than, let's say, the the likes of Western countries. Yeah,